Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to make this really cool procedural metal plates effect. Let's get started. Okay, so I've got this little tank based on the uh, Advanced Wars little mini tanks. So kind of a chibi cute thing. Um, anyways, so I made this. If you want to find out how to make this, you could join Patreon at any of tier or you could join on YouTube at the All Access Pass level and higher and get access to all the uncut tutorials. And I've got a lot of extra stuff like this one, for example, we go through all the modeling of putting this thing together. So thanks to everyone who's already a member in both of those spots. Thank you so much for helping make this channel happen. All right. What we want to do is we're going to first block out some panel shapes. So to do that, we're going to use a Voronoi texture. Voronoi is very versatile. You've got a lot of different shapes and stuff out of the Voronoi. We're going to plug the distance straight into the surface so we can just look at the raw values of this shader or this uh, procedural texture. I'm going to create a color ramp and this will allow us to shape the contrast a bit so I can move these around. And you can see we get these nice little dots. I'm going to take randomness all the way down and I'm going to switch this from Euclidean to, let's see, Manhattan, Chibichev. There we go. Chibichev is what we want. So you can see with this, we get these panels. So what we want to do is find a point in this ramp where our panels are far enough apart, where we get a little bit of a seam in between each of them like this. And what I want to do now is in these panels, we're going to create rows of bolts that are going to kind of line up along the outside of each of these panels. Now to do that, we're going to use another shader that's going to put circles across the whole thing. And then we need to sort of create a mask to cut out the exact area where we want to see the bolts and make sure everything else is blacked out. So first let's get the circles going. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and we're going to use a Voronoi texture again. So we're going to bring this up and I'll shift D my color ramp, plug it into the distance and I'll take the color into the surface. Now with this one, we're going to switch back up to Euclidean and you can see now we get these circles across the whole surface. Now I can take the scale way down and we're going to start to get these like, um, you know, much smaller circles. I can move this around as well. And I'm trying to find a place where I get um, the right sort of feel for little bolts, little bolts and screws, right? So, okay, because this is working pretty good. We do get some weirdness in some spots, but overall, this is the right, the right kind of shape and look. Now, what I want to do next is actually I want to create some like screw like divots in these. So we're going to use another one. We're going to come up here, shift D, Voronoi, shift D, color ramp, plug this in. And with this one, if I plug it into the surface, if we keep the values the same, but change it to Minkowski, we're going to get these little stars. Now, the reason why they're different sizes, it all comes down to the way this is being projected onto the surface. If I was to UV unwrap this and lay this out flat, I would get really exact flat patterns. Um, so like if I come over here and we use a texture coordinate node, let's go ahead and unify the texture coordinate for all these guys. Okay. But instead of just plugging this into each of these, what I want to do first is I'm going to plug this into some stuff where we can change all the values at once. So I'm going to grab a math vector math node and switch this to scale. Now that might be a bit confusing if you're not used to seeing a math node being used in this kind of a setup, but if you see the purple outputs, and the purple input here and the purple output. So this is basically showing you, this is all the same kind of value. So the texture coordinate node outputs different vectors. And these are basically used to place textures onto a surface in 3D. So I could plug any of these in, I'll stick with the object. And the scale function in this um, node basically allows you to scale up or scale down whatever it is that you plug into it. So the effect of this will be, we can make the um, image bigger or smaller. So I'm going to plug this into the vector of this one and I'll plug it into this one as well. And I might just leave these two. So I might just set up a second scale node here just in case I need it. So, okay, these are black circles on a white background. So what I want to do is take this and I basically want to invert it. So I want to flip these around so I can just do this right here. Now these guys are inverted and now we're going to combine these two together. So I want to take this and cut out the black with this white pattern that we have here, these crosses. So we can add these two together. So picture the values here. What we're looking at is a lot of black and all the black is basically, you know, the color zero, 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 like the number zero, zero, zero represent black. The white is one, 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 right? It's red, green, and blue channels are all one to get white. 
So if we multiply zero by any other number, it's gonna equal zero. And likewise, we could add one to something else. If we add it to black, for example, it will bring it up to white. So we're gonna use that information to um, combine these. So I'm gonna use an add. So I'm gonna come in here and do a color, mix color. And I'm gonna set this from mix to add. And we're gonna add that color with this color. I'll turn the factor all the way up and we'll have a look at what that looks like. And cool, there we go. So we get this little screw-like pattern in the side of these guys. Very nice. What we wanna do now is think about how to cut out shapes from this so that we don't have bolts everywhere. We just have it in the exact pattern that we want that matches the surface of this guy over here. So plug that back in. So how are we gonna do that? Well, what we wanna do is create a mask. So we're gonna basically create another shader based on this one that, or another texture based on this one that is going to have um, white where we want bolts and black where we don't. So we don't want bolts in between the, pla the plates. We want them just down a little bit. So let's shift D, make a little bit more room. Bring this one over here. We can also start labeling these to kind of make them a little bit clearer. So I can come over here to the node and if I take the label, I can type in anything I want and you can see it updates here. So we'll call this um, our metal plates. And this one I might call um, my bolt mask. That will be a little bit clearer. I'll take this distance and plug it into the factor and the color into the surface. Now they're gonna look identical. And I'm gonna click plus to create a new node and I'm going to make it black or white sorry and I'm going to move it around and then I'll click plus to create another one and I'll make this one black and now I can kind of identify okay where's the zone that I want these bolts so I want them to be in this sort of this white zone right here I'll make this white instead of gray and I might add another one as well and just zoom right in here I'll just drag this over so there's less of a fall off. So this bit right here is the bit that I want, right? Between all these. This guy, we don't need anymore. I can delete that. And so now you can see we've got these white squares wherever we're gonna want the bolts. And if we wanna change the size of those white squares, we can do that by adjusting these right here. So now let's put this to work. So we wanna take this and we wanna mask out this. So let's have a look again, what are the values? So these are black on white. So we wanna keep the black, we wanna get rid of all the white. This one, uh, we want to, yep. So we can use this and we can multiply this over this. And again, multiplying means that wherever we have black, it's gonna knock these values to zero. So let's shift D, bring this up, bring this one in, bring this one here. And then we're gonna switch this from add to multiply right up here at the top. There we go. Let's bring our output out a bit further and we'll take the result and plug it in. There we go, cool. So now we've got our mask at work. And so now what we can do is come back to our bolts and we can adjust them a little bit to get things to start to look, look right. Now, uh, this is gonna be our, we should start labeling these as well, just so we don't get lost. I'll just bring this over here. Which one's this? These are our screw heads and this is, these are the bolts. And um, now what we can do is we can adjust the scale on these guys. So I'm gonna add a little more control on this. I'm at a mapping node and I'll just drop it here. And this will allow me to now move it around a little bit so I can shift this. Now, in order to get this to add into this system right here, really cleanly, what we need is just the bolts, right? We don't want the mask or any of that other stuff to show up. So we wanna have just the bolts added into this. So what we need to do is figure out how to get this to just be the bolts. We need to get rid of this interior black bit and these black bits here, which are being used to cut away the bolts themselves. So we know that this mask, this color ramp is the one that generates this pattern, right? And basically we need an invert of that pattern. We need white here and black here and white here. And we're gonna add in those new white values. So what we can do is we can grab an invert color node and plug this into it. And then we can grab a, another mix color. We can set it to add, and we're gonna add those white values in to this system here. And we should get something that looks right. There we go. So now we have just bolts. We don't have anything else. We can also clamp the result. That can help sometimes just to get rid of, sometimes you get a little bit of bleed, uh, bleed through on some of these. 
So now that we have that, what we can do is we can take our main system over here and we can add these guys in. Now let's um, let's think about which direction things are going. Okay, so um, if we take this system here, let's create a bump node. And if we plug this into the height of the bump node and then take the normal into the normal, and then let's plug this in here into the BSDF so we can see it. Okay, so you can look like, it looks like it's going in. All right, so we want the bolts to be popping out. So we wanna invert these guys. So I'm gonna shift D, bring this over. So now the bolts are popping out, they're white, and everything else is black that goes in. Now, I um, just wanna check my base system and just see if that's thinking the same way. So black is in as white is out. So I wanna flip this, this system here. So I'll take another invert and drop it here. So this gets flipped as well. All right, great. Now we need to bring these guys and combine them. So let's see, we need to take these and I think, uh, how do we do this? We need to add them in. So we want this to have different layers than the surface, okay? So right now we've got white and black. White is the highest it can go and black is the lowest it can go. But we don't want that. We want the bolts to be a little bit higher than the base plate. So I'm gonna take this white and I'm gonna drop it down and uh, no, sorry, we're inverting it. That's right. So we got to go to the black and bring the black up. And that's going to darken the overall surface of this thing. There we go. So now if we take this and add it in, so grab another mix color, drop it here. We're going to set this to add and we will bring this one in and turn all the way up. These guys are going to be brighter than the surface here. And this is going to allow them to appear like they're pumping like further out than the surface of the plate itself. So let's have a look at all of that plugged into a bump node. So take this over to the height and take this over to the surface again. There we go. Let's turn the distance up. Great. Now we can adjust this these values um, a couple different ways. We can use the factor here. This will back off how much the bolts are mixed in. And that will allow us to determine how deep things go or how far out they uh, they pop. I might take this up to 0.05 maybe. Two, that looks pretty good. Now it looks like a fairly complicated node setup, but by labeling these nodes, it's actually pretty easy to figure out what's going on and we can understand it simply. Uh, I'm gonna minimize these just to make them a little bit less intrusive. And you don't need to control these very much. It's just these nodes that um, are important for really sitting all of the values. So that's our bolt bump system. Now we can add a little more variety into this by adding some color changes based on whether we have panels or not, or if they're bolts. So let's start doing that. So we can come over here and we can grab our, let's see, we should probably label which one is the cleaned up, like when it's just the bolts. So I know that this is where we add the bolts to the panels. So this one right here is just the bolts itself. So we can rename this bolts clean, for example. And now I can create a color ramp and I can use bolts clean here. And what I could do is pick the orange color that we've gone for and then have another color like the black, for example, and plug this into the base color. And so just flip these. Now the bolts are going to have a different color. Likewise, the divots would be good to have as a separate uh, color system. So I'll just name this one. Uh, let's see, plate gaps. And I can use plate gaps to drive a little bit of color as well. So I could come over here and grab a mix color and drop it here. I could set it to multiply, turn the factor up, and I can grab the plate gaps and plug it in here. And uh, this needs to be flipped because it's already, it's it's dark, I think. Maybe we we'll just grab this one. There we go. So that's gonna darken up the inside. Now we can use all these systems to drive other things like the uh, roughness, for example. So we could have different levels of rough, roughness based on you know what are the objects that are coming through. Likewise, metallic. We could make the, uh, the bolts metallic, but the plates not. So I might pull a little bit of metallic into the system there. Um, and it looks pretty good. Now what we can do is I can jump back into my camera and 
I can shape these sort of custom per object a little bit. Now I want to make some parameter changes for these. So what I want to do is I'm going to keep this whole system, but I want to be able to tweak the scales and the uh, the mapping. So what we can do is we can grab all of these like this and then control G to group them. Now this all feeds into its own node group. And these values I can change by going in by hitting tab, but I can leave them there. And now if I assign this to different things, I can make it a new shader and I can change these values individually for each one. So let's grab this outer panel object here and we'll just come down to the material shader. We've got metal plates here. We've got nine users of this data block. If I click this, it will rename it and now it's its own version. But everything in here stays the same. So it's you know being used by everything that's using this uh, same system, the same node group. But I can come in and change the scale of this specific object. So I can make these panels a lot bigger, for example. Um, I also might want to adjust the bump. So I need to go into the node group and I need to create something for the strength, now for the distance, I think. So I'll just come over here, grab this. I could just grab this little gray output and plug it right over here into the distance value. And now if I come back up, you can see I've got a new value here for distance and I can turn it up for these guys. So these panels are a bit more pronounced. I hope you really enjoyed this and you learned some cool things about how you can use shaders and use procedural materials to do some really cool stuff. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more things. Ring the bell to get notifications. I always forget to say that. And uh, yeah, check out the Patreon. Special thanks to everybody over on Patreon and everyone who has joined on YouTube. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, have a fantastic week. See ya. Oh, 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 oh